super solid. Super solid. <laughs> It could be fall forever. This weather is perfect. One of the jobs that we haven't finished is putting up our roof rails for our roof deck and solar panels. I don't know if you remember, but Don got dehydrated working on top of the bus and ended up with kidney stones and he was not up to getting back on the roof. First thing we want to do though is paint them. We're painting them just to give them an extra layer of protection, I guess. I've got an etching primer and a metallic Rust-Oleum spray. Don is laughing at my choice to paint the metal a metallic silver color. He's like, what? Why are you doing that? Well, my reasoning is that if it does happen to chip or anything, the metallic color is going to chip off and underneath they'll be silver and it'll be less noticeable. We've been sitting outside and they are dirty. Alright, well it's clean but there is some annoying stickers. I'm going to have to go and get some mineral spirits to clean that off. My only problem with fall is uh, the leaves do keep falling inside of my uni struts. Like uh, bus work with malice so far. <laughs> I know, I missed Don too. Look, I'm getting there. I'm looking at my set about four and a half cans of etching primer. I just realized that we only bought two cans of the metallic silver color. Which is obviously not gonna be enough. I just wanna show you what's going on on the other side of the bus today. Don's dad has been working on leveling out the ground because we're gonna put up a little tent so we have a little workspace for the winter. So we're gonna lay down some wood and put up a little tent here so that we can get all our crap out of the garage for the winter because they actually like to use their garage for cars. Remember how one of our windows for the front that we had gotten salvaged had a ruptured seal so the gas is leaked out? It's always going to have humidity in it. We can get a new window for that to replace it, but it cost a lot. We could drive up half a day, salvage another window and drive back a day. We don't really have the time for that right now and we can't find the same size window online anywhere. It was supposed to go here and it was big and long when we wanted our big view, right? But we realized having this higher up but long window would be a little bit weird. We have a fold down table here and so we kind of envisioned the two of us sitting here having dinner or working on our laptops and looking out at the beautiful view. So if you're the person sitting on this side, this window is actually kind of higher up and so your view's a little bit weird. You kind of got to look out the window like that. Um, and then this person has the little window, but the little window comes down lower. So they got a perfect view. So one person doesn't have a great view sitting at the table and the other does. And we got two little windows and our original idea was for two little windows to go here. But we kind of didn't think about the floor spacing so much and realized that that window's kind of wasted there because it's basically in the hallway. It helps with airflow, but not as far as getting the good view. So seeing as this window has an issue and we can't use it and we can't find one easily right now, I decided to make an executive decision that we're just not going to find this window. And instead of having two little windows that are long over here, we're just gonna put the two windows here on either side of the beam. 
that way we're gonna have both of us sitting at our table looking out at a beautiful view. We're having to make a compromise, I think, with what we wanted and what we envisioned to make it work with what we have. It's getting cold really quick and we're just kind of thinking about all the things we want to get done before the snow comes and uh, I think we just have to compromise on this one. I think it's the best choice for this situation, and it's not so bad. <laughs> Except, I'm upset. Well, I'm upset because I really wanted that view, but I'm also upset because it's not like it means less work. It's a lot more work. I gotta go cut the metal frames I built apart and try to refashion a frame to fit in that space now. Still only got two cans of the metallic spray paint for the uni struts out and I figured I'll sand them down and see how far I can get with two cans and tonight we're gonna head to the hardware store and we can go get some more. Don's on the other side welding together some more frames hopefully we can start putting those windows in soon and Don's parents are both working on leveling off the ground for our workshop tent so lots going on today. Looking really good. I like this metallic color. It looks really good. And I just realized this is the color that we want to paint the bus. We want the bus metallic silver. And this will look so good on the bus. Didn't get as much done as I wanted to today. I did get two frames for our new plan. There's one here, there's one right there. I wanted to get them sand down and painted, but it's not gonna happen. The sun's going down. I'm gonna try to hurry and get everything put away because it's supposed to rain tonight. And call it a night. work. I have to walk Zuri. She's 18, almost 19 years old now, so her walks are normally about five minutes and then she's ready for a nap. What I've learned thus far is it probably would have been quicker and maybe even cheaper to hire somebody to build these frames. Reason being the cuts themselves by the metal company were $3 per cut. I can get about four to six cuts out of these grinder wheels, and these are about $1.50 each. One of these, I'm probably going through a dozen already, probably do at least a dozen more of these cut wheels. Not to mention my grinder wheels. As you can see, this one's worn out. And with these grinder wheels, they're two or three bucks each as well. I've gone through at least 10. Unskilled laborer with not great skill or tools going to add up. So the lesson is trying to do it cheap yourself may not be the best option. If you don't know how to weld, I'm glad I could pass that along to you because at this point we're too far in to turn back. I managed to get these frames finished. Still not a weld expert, but it's really holding tight. Felt really good when I had to take apart that other frame and I had to cut into the metal to get it to pull apart because the weld was so strong. So even though they might not look good, I feel like they're really holding together nicely. Got the metallic paint so I can finish up painting these uni struts. It is a gloomy day today. And this afternoon we have some mini pandemic party plans. <laughs> it's my birthday tomorrow, my 2020 pandemic birthday. So we are celebrating today with a Skype party with South Africa family and some cupcakes in the garden. Or it starts raining in the garage. What did you do for your uh, pandemic birthday? Anything fun? 
Today I'm going to try using the Comfit Grip as I spray. Thank you very much to, I can't remember who it was, somebody, you know who you are. You just commented, I just went and got it and I'm excited to try it out. Well, it's definitely easier on the hands. First impressions of the Comfort Grip on the spray cans. Thumbs up. Let's go see if Mella used the Comfort Grip on her spray paint today. Definitely helps. Why didn't somebody tell me about this sooner? So I was telling you that this color is pretty much the color that we want to paint most of the bus. Some of it's going to be black, but it's not actually silver. This is nickel. We've been looking for a metallic paint. All the metal paints that we have found don't come in metallic. We were hoping that we could use this little metallic from Rust-Oleum on the bus. We've like searched the Rust-Oleum website and it only comes in these cans. They don't sell it in a paint, so ideally, when we spray paint the bus, we'd like to get like a spray gun, you know, so you can do it uh, faster. Doing the entire bus with these little cans sounds ridiculous. That'll take forever. So, anybody got any solutions for us? That's our current dilemma we're facing. I do really like this comfort grip. Um, now that I've spray painted for a while, I do realize, oh, it's way better on my hand. And what's really cool about it is I can actually spray paint with my left hand. I can alternate with my hands. While I wait for these guys to dry, I'm going to go inside the bus and finish putting some Rust-Oleum on the sheet metal on the inside. Alright, 45 minutes before party time. I have time to flip these puppies over and get two coats and be done with the spray painting. Let's start with this one. So our idea was to put the frames in, screw them into the existing beams, then we do a quick dry fit and see if we can get an ink line so it's clearly detailed where we need to cut before we put our frames in. Three person job or make a template. We tested it. Got in a plan together, ready to go ahead and mount our frames, and found out we're out of screws. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> we had bought so many of these screws, probably like six or seven hundred. I love that we've still got the box. <laughs> <laughs> we have two empty boxes, but that means it's time to uh, not do anything else yeah, for the plan today. We got an appointment today, so maybe we'll get it done tomorrow. We're gonna try it again. Now that we got screws. Is it gonna happen this time? We're we gonna do it? I think we're gonna get them all done. Mella told me not to be so optimistic. I think we should just say we're gonna do two today. So when we put in four, we'll feel good. And if we get all of them done, fantastic. You know what, let's cut it open. What? You don't know? No, it just becomes a little messy. <laughs> I might pass out. Uh, it'd be much easier if we cut it open. It's gonna be so messy. You I know this this gun sucks, you need to get a better gun. Oh, I'm gonna order a gun today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we can't get them all put in today if this is the, the pace we have to go at. Ugh. Here, let me take over for Let's 
So one of the things that we did last time when we were working on the Seeker Flex is we ended up cutting up in one of our tubes because it, the top part had sealed up because we let it sit for three or four days. And once we cut it up, we used a, a metal putty knife and it was so much easier to apply. I think that's how we're gonna do the rest of these because it just makes more sense. Super solid. So solid. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. We got something done. See, we did the two that I said we were going to do. Don't you feel good? Let's do the studio with you now. This one could use a little, little pick me up. Look how shiny they are. Oh yes, sparkly. That's what we should do. Just grind the whole side of the bus down. It'll be silver, we don't have to paint it. <laughs> yep. We'll let those sit and flip them over, get them another hit. And we'll use them as our big metal shims. All we gotta do is put that glue on and screw them in. easier than that thing, isn't it? It sure is easier. It means we're gonna not be able to use the rest of the tube once it's open. This is not like ideal by any means, but it is a lot easier to just do it this way. I think we did it. Yep. See? Almost stuck all the thing. We have four frames in. We only are building three more frames. Because it's so warm today, we have a little window we could put our first layer of insulation in, which is gonna be put the stair on the walls. So it's the same as what we did on our ceiling. So we're just gonna fill out any wall spaces where there are not gonna be windows. Um, we're gonna use the hot cement glue again, paint that on, and then push the Ceratex into the wall. Such great progress at the beginning of the day. Yep, we achieved our goal of putting in four frames. We decided because it's good weather today, it would be a good day to glue in the Ceratex into the wall because we needed to be a certain temperature. We've done this before on the ceiling, so we thought, okay, we know what we're doing, let's go do it. And as we started painting the contact cement on to adhere the Ceratex to the wall, it started just eating away at the Rust-Oleum. Yeah, it started bubbling up like it was obvious that something was chemically going on with it, the reaction. So we stopped. We're like, oh, okay, this is not working. Something's wrong. It looks like the rusty primer that we painted isn't great for galvanized metal. Also, the contact cement that we've used all along, we got in touch with the manufacturer and with the beauty of internet chat, asked them if the contact cement glue was good for galvanized metal and paper. And they said no. 
The website says you can use it on metal, so we just thought, you know, that's metal. And so we said, oh, okay, what do you have that does work with galvanized metal? And they said, nothing. <laughs> The etching primer is okay on galvanized steel. So if you're wanting to paint your steel, you can use etching primer and then paint over it. So if you're playing along at home and building your bus, make sure to read up plenty on galvanized metal. So the bad news is that our rusty metal primer probably won't do anything to help our metal from not rusting. Probably a little bit of waste of time and money, but we have some good news. The good news is, Cicaflex works. It bonds both to primer paint, zinc coated metal, galvanized metal, and ceramics. The best adhesive <laughs> is the one you already have. We don't have any other options right now because <laughs> it's nobody it's else says, works. says anything works. Black Zika Flex on beautiful white ceramic blankets looks horrible. <laughs> Especially when you get all of your hands. Yeah, application process doesn't help. So if you haven't watched all our videos and you don't know what the Ceratec stuff is, we will link of when we did our ceilings and we talk about what Ceratex is and why we're using it. And you can see how we installed it in our ceiling, which will be a little bit different than this messy Cicaflex that we're having to use on the walls. This is only our first layer of insulation. We are putting sheep's wool on top of it, so stay tuned for that. We've been pretty loose with our schedule. Winter is coming. We have a few things that we feel we need to get done before it starts to snow. And because uh, Ruben said he bets we're not gonna have any furniture in the bus by the end of the year, I wanna prove him wrong. I have a feeling he's gonna be right, but um, <laughs> I'd really like to get some furniture in here before the end of the year. At least have the furniture that we've made already just inside <laughs> up here, even if it's not installed. So our goal is we want to make sure we have put the windows in, completed our insulation for the ceiling and walls, installed our ceiling, installed our walls, and our flooring. And from there, we'll have a finished shell, which hopefully we'll be able to keep comfortable that we can work on throughout the winter months, because it gets cold in the Midwest. So the whole time we've been working away in here, my dad's been busy on the flooring for the workshop. And it's really coming together. Look at that, practically got a floor. Almost a square. A hair out of square, is that what they say? Ah, it was a long journey to get here. Today's a big day. We're gonna learn how to put windows in. <sighs> <laughs> what could go wrong? Well, Mella, mm -hmm. I got a surprise for the winter. We're gonna live in here. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving in, but we'll share that with you next time. I think I got our uni struts to look like. I want the side of the bus to look like. Ooh, I got excited. Sorry, I, I had to wiggle and then I wiggled the camera. I'll show you how they work. Just clip this over here, like that. Now we got the ability to paint if I don't paint the camera. Oh no, there's a spider on the camera. Dude, get off. Lonely out here. You gotta talk to yourself. And there's nobody to work with. <laughs>